Good morning everybody, this is Kelly Ferris. I just wanted to do a quick video on um, my method of free motion quilting using Embrilliant Stitch Artist. I have version 3 and um, it, it was so easy. I, I'm recently unemployed which is a bummer but it gives me time to go over and relearn software or learn new techniques and, and that kind of thing which includes um, stitch artists. So I'm going to show you what I did. Uh, I'm going to show a picture of the flowers and the um, background quilting that I uh, showed on the uh, Stitch Artist uh, Facebook page. And um, in the meantime, let's get started. This is my, on the uh, canvas, my 180 by 130 hoop. Um, I like to use my magnetic hoop in this size a lot. I also have a 200 by 260, um, but it's just easier for me to maneuver fabric and that kind of thing uh, as far as hooping and unhooping. So this is my canvas with the 130 by 180 hoop. What I want to do is the easiest thing that I've learned to do, because I'm visual, I like to lay my my uh, designs on the canvas. So I'm just going to choose a, a few outlines here. We'll use the circle. I'll say okay. Alright, size that down just a just a wee arch. I'm going to turn that circle into stitches. Here, a running stitch. Okay. I've sized it down. I'm just going to put it like in any old random spot. I'm going to choose another shape. Let's see. Let's do a star. I'm going to say OK. Size that down just a bit. And of course if you want, you know, when you use your shapes or designs, you can uh, rotate them, resize them uh, any way you want to. I'll go ahead and put a running stitch on that. And uh, we'll just choose two more. So I will use a heart. It's just going to be a real, you know, basic shapes. So let's choose heart 9 in the Embrilliance Outlines catalog. Again, let's add some stitches to that. And we're going to go ahead and size that down as well. Let's go ahead and size that down. Put this guy over here. And let's get one more. Hmm. What should we choose? What should we choose? Something basic. Let's go with the triangle. Say OK. These things are start out huge, but you know, again, you can resize it, rotate it, you know. So, OK, so we have four shapes here on the canvas. And you'll notice, I'm going to turn on my view and view my jumps. Oh, first, let's turn that triangle into stitches. Okay, so you're going to be able to see my jumps. I've got my, my jumps view on. And it goes from the circle to the star to the heart to the triangle. No worries, we're going to get rid of that later. Alright, so we're going to do um, our lines. Okay, I'm going to go up here to the menu pane and draw with points. Okay, so, you know, Nothing fancy, although, you know, I like to do loop-de-loops and things like that and and uh, just kind of wander around until I, I'm planning on putting a library of um, shapes like spirals and pebbling and that thing together in some kind of design library. So I don't have to keep reinventing the loop, but uh, the, uh, the wheel. So in the meantime, I've drawn a line. Okay, you can see the draw points here. And I'm going to go back up to my menu and turn those into a running stitch. Well, no, hold on. End it. Turn into running stitch. Okay. Okay, so 
we're going to draw points again. This time I'm going to lead them from the star. And again, there's no rhyme or reason uh, as far as, you know, where I'm heading with this. I might be a little close, but no worries. These are easy to move. Go ahead and just stick them anywhere. It doesn't have to be in the cusp. It can be these um, points can land anywhere on your next shape. Go ahead and right click and end it. Come up, running stitch. Okay. All right, so let's do, we're going to do two more lines. One from the heart. I'm going to start him. Uh, it doesn't really have to be on the cusp, so we'll start this line right here. And uh, come up. I like to fill in as much space as possible. And the purpose behind my um, free motion quilting is to really hold my backing fabric and my uh, my batting down uh, as best as possible. So I'll end it right here at the point of this triangle. Right click to end my uh, draw points function and then again come up to the menu and do a running stitch. Okay, one more line. Draw points anywhere on the triangle. Go ahead and start drawing points. Uh, do another loop de loo, I guess. Come down to the circle where I started off. Right click to end the draw points function. Come up to the menu. Running stitch. Okay. So if you look at my canvas, you're going to notice that I have jump stitches all over the place. And those are easy to get rid of because what we want is one continuous line. So we're going to come over here to the objects pane. Okay. If it's uh, collapsed, we want to go ahead and, and expand that. There's the run for the circle. Okay. The very first run we did with draw points to make our line, we want to move that under the circle. All right. So that got rid of a jump stitch already. We have another run, which we're going to move under the star. Okay, if you take a look, we've got two jump stitches down. All right, with the heart, which is up here, we're going to grab our next run, pull it up, Oops, click off, pull it up. Put it under the heart. Okay. And that much pretty much does it with the jump stitch in between our shapes. Now you'll notice that there are jump stitches here inside the shapes. So what we want to do to get rid of those is we now have to tell um, the software where we want to start and stop our points. Within each shape, I would take the start and the start. <laughs> I don't know why it's always tricky. Green bow, green bow here. Actually, that start could go anywhere. So we're going to end it right here. Okay, so it's going to start up here. And I don't care about this first shape anyway because it's the first one. Going to start our circle here and end it here where it meets up with the beginning of our draw points line. Okay. All right, with the star, we're going to move up here. Going to click on the star. Now our our stitch line here that we did with draw points ends here. So I want to be able to start that shape as close to the end shape or the, the end point of our line as possible. So I'll put it like right on top. Okay. That'll get rid of that jump stitch. And our ending point of the star just happens to be right up close with our line that leads to the heart. 
And we'll go back and fix that because we don't really want any overlapping lines here, but we'll fix that. Right now we're just trying to get rid of any and all jumps. All right, so the next shape is our heart. We want to take the start point, starting point here, with our starting point of our line. Okay, that got rid of the jump. And then the stop, we want to put as close to the starting point of the next line. That way there are no jumps. Okay, we are jump free for those first three shapes. Here's our triangle. Okay, we want the start to, to um, let's get rid of that end point. We want our start, starting point to land as closer on top of the end point of our last line. And then we want our ending point to start at the start point, or the end point, start point of our, this next line. So if you look, depends on where all of your start and end points land, is where um, you're going to eliminate your jump stitches. Okay, so let's say we have some overlapping lines, which we don't want when we're doing free motion quilting. Just take this little guy here and just move him as close to that stitching as possible. And you'll notice it's gone. All right, just check all of your, all of your stitches. Uh, I guess I can let that one go at the, the cusp of the heart up there. This looks good. This guy down here, where the star is at, I could use a little improvement there. So I know it seems a little anal, but you know, you want your stitching to look good. So I'll just move him up just a wee narsh, right about, that looks good. Okay, that, that's the fun thing about stitch artist um, or in brilliance is you, you can modify your stitches and your design the way you want to see them go. So let's go ahead and put our, can we move this guy? I think so. No. All right, that's okay. Move our circle, oops. Grab, grab it, like so, and just nudge him up just a bit. I guess we can use the directional keys. Okay, so we have a nice little stitch here on top of the circle, and a nice little stitch here at the bottom of the circle. So everything just kind of flows, which is important with, um, you know, I'm calling it free motion quilting, but you know, obviously I'm, I'm using software, but it still mimics free motion quilting, which is what I love. So everything, uh, the threads are all in one color. So when we go ahead and engage the, um, the stitch simulator, speed this up a little bit. It's all the threads are in one color, as you can see, and it'll start down at the circle, move up, do our star, move up, do our heart, move down, do our triangle, and end back at the circle. And it's that easy. And let me get out of here. Now, uh, as another example, what you can also do, I, I like to lay out my shapes. I'm very visual. I want to know where everything kind of lands. But you always have an alternative, let's start a new canvas, where you can go ahead and um, draw your points first if you want to. Go into Stitch Artist, draw your points, one, two, just, just draw the way you want to, okay? And then from here, turn that into uh, a running stitch. And you can go ahead and insert your shape as you go along if you want. Okay, and I think you can probably rearrange those too, as long as you know where your starts and stops are at. Oh heck, lost my running stitch. Okay, there it is. All right, so we're going to add our shape, add our circle, 
say OK. Shrink it down. I mean, you don't have to. If you want it that big, that's fine. Go ahead and put it in there as close to that end stitch. The ending point of the uh, previous running stitch is um, real close to right on top. All right. Make sure you turn that into running stitches. And again, put your start point down here and go on with your next line. I believe the end point was up here, so we'll go ahead and just make a little curly cue. End it right by right clicking. Put in your running stitch. Add your next shape. We'll put in one of these badges. Say OK. You can shrink it down, maneuver it any way you want to. Um, how about if we just rotate this guy a little bit? OK. All right, go ahead and make them into a running stitch. Bring the start point over to your end point on your running stitch. You'll notice those jump stitches disappeared. And then just go from there until you end wherever you want to. So it, it really is this simple. Um, I hope this uh, tutorial helped you in, in one form or another. And um, of course, if you have any questions, you can, you can just uh, leave a comment. All right. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.